Modules five and six, subject verb agreement. First, let's define what we mean by subject verb agreement. The form of the main verb must match or agree with the subject of the sentence in terms of being either singular or plural. Let's look at some examples. First, a singular example. Sam works very hard. In this sentence, works is the main verb and Sam is the subject. Now, Sam is singular. So the form of the, ver of the verb to work that agrees with the singular subject is works. Let's look at a plural example. The boys work very hard. The verb, the main verb in this sentence is work. The subject is boys. In this case, the subject boys is plural. The form of the verb to work that agrees with the plural subject is work. Note, if you're wondering what form of the verb to choose, you know, which cho uh, agrees with the singular subject or which agrees with the plural subject, singular verbs, uh, singular verb forms often end in the letter S, which is interesting because let's look at the first example. The singular verb form is works and it has an S in the end, so this is correct. We're used to plural forms of nouns having S on the end. So we have to be very careful not to confuse that with singular verb forms, because singular verb forms have an S in the end often. Now this is a fairly easy concept, but there are complications five of them to be exact. Let's look at complication number one, modifiers. Prepositional phrases and other modifiers are often between the subject and the main verb. And these modifiers between the subject and main verb can make it difficult to identify what the subject actually is. Let's look at an example of a prepositional phrase between the subject and main verb. The main verb here is are. The subject of this sentence is girls. Between the subject and the main verb is a prepositional phrase in the back row. Now, we know from previous videos and lessons that in the back row as a prepositional phrase cannot contain the subject of the sentence. However, if we didn't realize that and we didn't know that, we might be tempted to think that row is the subject of the sentence. And you'll notice that row is singular. So if we thought row was the singular subject of this sentence, we would be tempted to say, the, have the verb form as the singular verb form, which is is. So we could be tempted, if we thought row was the subject of the sentence, to read the sentence like this. The girls in the back row is my cousins which of course is incorrect. It's incorrect because the subject of this sentence is girls. And because the subject of the sentence is plural, the, we have to choose the verb form which is the plural verb form, which is are. So, are is correct. This sentence is correct as it reads, the girls in the back row are my cousins. Let's look at a modifying word group in between the subject and verb, instead of a prepositional phrase. Yell, the people who are at the game yell loudly. Yell is the main verb of the subject, sorry, of the sentence, and the subject of the sentence is people. Now there's a modifying word group between the subject and the verb. In this modifying word group is the word game. We may think that the subject is game, which is singular, which would make the verb for, uh, the singular verb form would be yells. But this sentence as it is, is correct. The subject of the sentence is people, it's plural, and the plural verb form of yell, to yell is yell.
the people who are at the game yell loudly. We can also have an appositive in between the subject and verb. In this example, the house, the one with all the tall trees, belongs to the Smiths. The verb of this sentence, the main verb, is belongs. The subject is house. In between the subject and verb is an appositive. In this appositive is the word trees. Trees is plural. If we thought trees was the subject of the sentence, then the verb would be belong, and that would be incorrect. Let's read the sentence if we, with the verb form as singular verb form, belong. The house, the one with all the tall trees, belong to the smiths. That's incorrect. As it is, it's correct with belongs. Another example with a verbal phrase between the subject and verb. The main verb of this sentence, the car is sitting in my driveway, look expensive, is look. The subject is cars. We have a plural subject cars, therefore the form of the verb must be the plural form of the verb. The form of the verb that agrees with the plural subject, look, L-O-O-K. No S on the end. We have a verbal phrase between them sitting in my driveway. We must be very careful because driveway is singular. If we thought driveway was the, su was the subject of the sentence, our verb form that agrees with the singular subject would be looks because it has an S in the end. And this sentence would read, the cars sitting in my driveway looks expensive, which would be incorrect. So we have to be very careful and going back to parts of a sentence module, module the, the, sorry, the parts of a sentence video, we were taught how to recognize mo modifying word groups of positives and verbal phrases. In general, they are groups of words that describe a word. In, this, in these cases, each of these groups of words describe the subject. Groups of words that describe something are not going to be the subject or main verb of the sentence. Let's look at com uh, complication number two. Sometimes there are two or more subjects, not just one. That complicates things. Let's look at the first example. John and Mary are late. Now, the main verb of the sentence is are. The subject is not just Mary or not just John. It's John and Mary. Therefore, the subject of this sentence is plural. Even though there's only one John and one Mary, together, it's a plural subject. So therefore, the form of the verb that agrees with the plural subject is are. The garbage bag and its container are in the kitchen. Same thing. Verb is are, and the subject of this sentence is garbage bag and container. It's a plural subject, so the verb form must agree with the plural subject, and the verb, verb form that agrees with the plural subject is are, not is, because is is the form of the verb to be that agrees with the singular subject. Complication number three, questions. We have to be careful with questions because usually the subject comes before the verb. So, for example, the bear eats food. So we have the verb eats, the subject comes before it. This is the case most of the time. However, in questions, as you may recall, from module four. Sometimes in questions, the verb splits the subject. In this case, do John and Sue plan to work tomorrow? The, verb, the main verb of this sentence is do plan. The subject, in other words, who do plan, John and Sue. And in this case, it's a plural subject because we have more than one person. 
it would be incorrect here to say, does John and Sue plan to work? Because does plan would be the verb form that agrees with the singular subject. Notice the hint we discussed earlier. The verb form that agrees with the singular subject usually has an S in it. Complication number four, there and here sentences. Very similar to questions. Again, usually the subject comes before the verb, but in there or here sentences, the verb comes before the subject. So in this first example, there is one of the books that I needed. The verb, main verb of the sentence is is. The subject of the sentence is one. The subject, going back to complication number one, notice the subject is not books because of the books is a prepositional phrase. And we know that the subject cannot be in a prepositional phrase or a modifying word group or in a positive. So in this sentence, the subject is one and the verb agrees with the singular subject. And the verb form that agrees with the singular subject is is. And notice again, it has an S on the end. And finally, complication number five, indefinite pronouns. And this is probably the most uh, difficult of the complications. Sometimes the subject is an indefinite pronoun. Therefore, it is unclear whether the subject is singular or plural. Thus the term indefinite pronoun. It's not definite as to whether the pronoun is singular or plural. Let's look at the first example. Neither of the students is studying. Okay. The main verb of this sentence is, is studying. The subject of this sentence is neither. We know the subject is neither because it can't be students because of the students is a prepositional phrase. All right. So the subject is neither. Now neither, it's not clear if neither is singular or plural. But as we will soon see, neither is considered a singular indefinite pronoun. And I will provide you in this video with a list of indefinite pronouns and whether they are singular or plural. And here it is, singular and definite pronouns. Here's a list of them. Anyone, anybody, everyone, everybody, each, either, much, neither or neither, nobody, no one, one, somebody, someone, somebody. When you see one of these pronouns, these indefinite pronouns, they will always be singular. Plural indefinite pronouns. You see one of these indefinite pronouns, they will always be plural. Both, few, many, more, several. Now, there are some indefinite pronouns that can be either singular or plural, depending on the context. And we'll look at a couple of examples, but here they are. Any, all, most, none, and some. They may be singular or plural. You have to look at the context of the sentence. So, examples. Let's look at the first. Most of the boys are playing. Okay. The verb of this, now this is correct, but let's examine it. The main verb of the sentence is are playing. The subject of the sentence is most. The Prepositional phrase of the boys, of course, will not contain the subject of the sentence. All right, so we see the indefinite pronoun most. And if you're not sure if it's in a singular or plural indefinite pronoun, go to the list. 
So we go to our list. Is it a singular indefinite pronoun? No, we don't see it there. Is it a plural indefinite pronoun? No, we don't see it there. Is it a singular or plural indefinite pronoun? Yes, right there. So we have to look at the context of the sentence. So if we look at the context of the sentence, the hint is to go to the prepositional phrase. Is the object in the prepositional phrase, in this case boys, singular or plural? The object in the prepositional phrase is plural, boys. Therefore, the indefinite pronoun in this case is plural. So this subject, the indefinite pronoun most, is plural because boys is plural. That's only because it's an indefinite pronoun that could be either singular or plural. So be careful. It's only these five verb, uh, words. So therefore, the verb must agree with the plural subject, which is are. Now let's look at the second example. Most of the game is over. All right. The verb is is. And this, by the way, the sentence is correct. Is. And the subject is most. And we know the game is not the subject of the sentence because it's within this prepositional phrase of the game. Now, again, we have a uh, indefinite pronoun most. We look on our list. It's not a singular indefinite pronoun. It's not a plural indefinite pronoun. It could be either or. So therefore, we have to look at the context of the sentence. And in the contents of context of this sentence, we look at the prepositional phrase, the, specifically the object in the prepositional phrase, which is game. Game is singular. So therefore, in the context of this sentence, the subject, the indefinite pronoun subject, most, is singular. Therefore, the verb, the form of the verb must agree with the singular subject, and that is is. And we know that because the hint we had earlier is the most of the time, the form of the verb that agrees with the singular subject is, has an S on the end. And then that is the case with the form of to be, in this case, is.